Welcome to The Blitz, a podcast from Coram Deo Church. The Blitz is all about tackling tough topics head on at full speed. Are you ready? Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is that you happen to be checking out this podcast. My name is Pastor John, the lead pastor of Corndale Church, and I'll be your host today once again on The Blitz. All right, guys, this is number two for the new season, and uh, good to be with you, and thanks for uh, checking this out. Um, today I want to talk about uh, Russell Moore, not as much as an individual, but as a representative of a kind of a position and ideology. Uh, I want to talk about Russell Moore, um, the idea of Christian nationalism and Jonah. Okay. Now, to be fair, on the front end, I think I saw a meme online that kind of sparked uh, this idea, or at least put some kind of flesh to this idea that's kind of been floating around in my head for a while. And so this might be a little bit of a random uh, episode. And if it's too random for you, uh, I certainly apologize here, but we're just, we're just going to kind of go for it. So uh, Russell Moore and uh, it, it kind of in that same vein, uh, David French, have been these um, these voices within kind of North American evangelicalism in the last years. And I, I say in the last years because Russell Moore was a very different guy uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. The positions he was holding, the things he was arguing for, his theology, it's very, very different. So I'm, I'm talking about recent Russell Moore really... Uh, going into 2020, COVID, all that from that point forward. Uh, he's kind of become the poster boy and one of the prominent voices, along with uh, with, with David French, um, critiquing um, what's been referred to as, as Christian nationalism. And um, without getting into all of the details of that, there's, there's basically, COVID really sparked... Uh, this debate or uh, maybe didn't spark the debate, but kind of revealed uh, some differences that then kind of like snowballs just started rolling. All right. And, and so what happened um, during the season of COVID and, and with, with BLM and the riots and all of that, uh, what happened is there was an argument about what role um, does God's law revealed in scriptures play uh, at a at a national level, should it have an effect uh, on policy and how we uh, understand events and how the church responds to events? So that was kind of, I mean, that's an oversimplification, but that was at the core of what was going on. And so you had people like like Russell Moore and David French who are who are really arguing that um, that God's law really shouldn't play a role, a vital role, have a voice uh, in terms of public policy and how uh, the church responds. And, and guys like David French go as far as, as celebrating um, public policies that are that are clearly biblically uh, an abomination to God. Um, Russell Moore has done some really weird things like uh, when when Roe v. Wade was overturned, he just he had nothing to say. Um, about that, but then he's very critical of other nations that are um, adopting laws that protect life and protect the family and protect um, young vi victims um, from sexual predators. It's just it's it's really weird and really hard to wrap your your mind around. And 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 sometimes you just get this sense that that these guys want to distance themselves from God's law. They want to distance themselves from a Christianity uh, that has any sort of teeth to it, a Christianity that is different uh, uh, from the culture or even any sort of Christianity that would stand opposed to things that are happening uh, in in culture. And so some people have talked about um, like these guys always punch, they always punch right, meaning that um, they want to cater to the left. Um, but and they're only critical of the right, and certainly there are things pol politically speaking on the right that we should be critical of. Um, but but it seems uh, it seems not right to uh, be critical of issues on the right and then to remain completely silent 
uh, to issues on the left, um, specifically, and it always comes back to this, relating to the LGBTQ uh, Romans 1 rev- revolution thing that's going on. So, um, and so, so Russell War Moore um, has really been the, the face and the voice of, of, um, of people who are uh, arguing that, that uh, the God's law uh, should not uh, really influence policy or law and that the Christians should not be thinking about uh, Christianizing uh, um, a, a nation, that the idea of a nation being Christian is something that's completely foreign uh, uh, to the Bible. That's, that's kind of Russell Moore's, uh, one of his positions. And, and so it, it made me think about, um, it made me think about the book of Jonah and uh, you probably are at least, you know, somewhat familiar with it. If not, go read it. It's four chapters. It's four. <laughs> it's like it's like four pages of your Bible. It would take you like maybe maybe 10 minutes to read the whole thing. And the basic story of Jonah is that, that he is called by God um, to go to Nineveh and to preach the gospel and to call them to repent. And uh and Nineveh is a sworn enemy. It's like the capital of Israel's sworn enemy. All the bad things that happened to Israel, they're all coming right out of Nineveh. And so uh, Nineveh is like the last place that Jonah wants to go to. He doesn't want them to uh, repent. He doesn't want them to turn to God because he knows if they do that, that God will will spare them and, and he will spare their enemies. And he doesn't want to do that. So the story unfolds that he... You know, apparently he's a he's a he's a wealthy man. He's able to basically charter a boat and and try to uh, go the exact uh, you know directly opposite way of, of Nineveh. Uh, and he tries that, and he ends up getting thrown overboard on this boat. And he ends up in the the belly of some fish. Uh, in Jonah two, it's kind of like he has a death and resurrection. Uh, experience. He spit out onto this beach, and then he marches into um, uh, Nineveh, and and he proclaims this uh, kind of this turn or burn sermon. He's like, you know, forty more days, and Nineveh will be overturned, and uh, and he probably said more than that, but that's the summary that we get in Jonah chapter three. So this is you know not a very winsome approach uh, to seeing Nineveh uh, turn around. But what we read in Jonah chapter three is that Nineveh actually repents and that the king uh, issues a decree that everybody is supposed to repent and turn from sin and turn to God. And hopefully God will relent and withhold um, this this punishment. And so what you see happening in Nineveh is is like this this kind of national, uh, if you will, conversion that is decreed and is initiated by the king in which he says, this is what we're doing, Ninevites. This is the direction we're going. This is the God we're going to worship. This is the God we're going to obey. All right. So so that happens in Jonah 3. And then Jonah 4 is almost like this this comedic scene in which Jonah is up on the hill, kind of overlooking the city. And he is so frustrated by what happened. He's just he's just beside himself. He's complaining, he's arguing, he's miserable, he's whiny. He just he just cannot believe that uh Nineveh actually turned to God in in some measure of repentance uh clearly from the text enough to uh for God to withhold the judgment and and Jonah just can't believe it, right? Now, the funny thing with Jonah is that it, it ends with that scene, and um, and we don't know exactly what happens to Jonah, but the, the very fact that Jonah writes the story seems to be that it's like the story, uh, or the act of him writing it and recording it, is is an act of public repentance because he he basically, he's not the good guy at all. He just looks like a total um, doof. Uh, from chapter one to chapter four, but the very fact that he's telling the story seems to be like his public uh, repentance. Okay, so uh, so the irony is here's this this guy who's sent to to proclaim news to a city, uh, and he doesn't want to do it 
because he knows if he does it, they might repent. And then the king issues a decree of national repentance, and Jonah's just so angry. And so you kind of get this picture. He's up on the hilltop, just, just miserable. And it just made me wonder if, if uh, just try to imagine this for a moment. Let's just say that you, you went to uh, your Twitter feed or Facebook or wherever it is you get your news, and you, and you just kind of started scrolling through stuff, and then you saw this video. And uh, in this video, President Joe Biden uh, got in front of the camera and he said, we have been wrong. We have worshipped the wrong God. We have act, acted sinfully. We have acted in rebellion to God. Not just he as an individual, but our nation. That we have not treated the unborn as they should be treated. We have not treated individuals with dignity and respect. Our laws, our economic policies, these have not been just, and they have hurt uh, people, they've hurt families. And then imagine that President Joe Biden says, we are repenting today, and we're turning from our sin, and we are turning to Christ. We are no longer going to do business this way. We will no longer govern unjustly, but we will govern in a way that glorifies God and his son because Christ is Lord. And that begins uh, today. I want you to imagine that that happened, right? That that, that confession was made, okay? And, and then ask yourself, how would people respond? Now, of course, People who are who are not Christians, people who are just devout militant atheists, they would lose their mind over. Okay, okay, agreed with that. But how would the church respond? And part of me wonders, like, how would Russell Moore respond if that happened? And I just wonder if he and guys like him, like David French, uh, I I wonder if they would be up on the hill <laughs> watching. Uh, this happen, you know, live uh, streaming it on their their phones or whatever. I wonder if they would just be shaking their heads in disbelief and just be so disappointed that there was some statement of national repentance and a and a national turning to God. I wonder, and also just just complaining and bitter that that somebody had the audacity to think that God's laws that that we. We receive in his word, his laws that are good and pure and trust and uh, are tr- that are true and, 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 and life giving. Uh, I, I wonder if he would just be like, no, this is not right. I just wonder if he would, he would do that. And, and to, to those uh, who, who push back on the idea of a Christian nation or God's laws um, affecting the way a people uh, govern the way that they do life, that they, they shape and form culture. People who, who argue against that. I, I just wonder if, if that day ever came in this country where we had a president get up in front of the mic and in front of the camera and saying, we're repenting. We're no longer going this way. We're going this way. We're going to honor God. We're going to heed his law. We're going to submit to him. I, I just wonder would those people celebrate that day or would they like Jonah um, just sit back, not just in disbelief, but like just deeply irritated that, that, that the president, the administration, the whoever um, had decreed that we're following, we're following Christ now. I just, I just wonder how they would, um, they would respond uh, that would be something to uh, behold. And that's something to think about. Like, how would you respond if that happened? Would your heart be broken that the uh, that the president said, hey, we have not followed Christ and we're going to start following him now and things got to change? Would that, would that break your heart or would that cause you to rejoice? Would you be uh, fearful of that or would you delight that, um, that God's, grace and his mercy and the good news of the gospel had so impacted and transformed a political leader that that leader then wanted to govern in a way that glorified God is, is, is that something that would concern you or is that something that would, um, 
delight you. You know, when Paul writes to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, Timothy is instructed to pray for kings and all sorts of people in authority. And, uh, and, and I think that we're being naive if, we're, if we assume that the last thing Paul wanted was for Timothy and the church, because it's written to a church, it's talking about a public gathering there. Uh, I think that we're naive if we think that Paul did not want the church to be praying for the conversion of political leaders. I, I just don't know how you can, you can get there. We're told to, to pray for these leaders specifically so that we can live at peace. Right. We want we want the those who are placed in government to govern um, righteously and justly. And that that righteous standard, that standard of justice comes from God's law. We want them to govern that way um, because that is the law. Those are the standards that are consistent with with human life and, and justice and mercy and flourishing. Right. We want them to govern that way and 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 not just to govern that way. But we want them also to come to uh, a saving knowledge of, of Christ as Lord. So I wonder, I wonder if that happened. If, what if Vice President uh, Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden, what if they got up and they, and they said, hey, as a country, we got to go to Christ. We got to run to Christ. We've screwed this thing up. Right. Would you celebrate that or would you mourn that? I'm guessing you would celebrate that. And if you wouldn't celebrate that, I think you got to ask yourself, why? If we're supposed to disciple the nations and teach them all that Christ commanded, when, when, when he gave us that command, did he, was he excluding any class of people? Or is that for all people and for all nations? Think about that. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out. Hope this was helpful and fun, maybe a little bit playful. And uh, if you've got any questions, of course, always let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Blitz. Take care. Take care.